Hi, in this video we're going to be looking at 9.5 estimating decimals. The lesson objective is to be able to learn how to estimate decimal sums, differences, products, and quotients. Now remember, when you see the word estimate, that means that we're going to have to round. And we talked about rounding decimals back in Chapter 8, so we're going to be able to apply those skills in this lesson. The problem will tell you which place to round to. So to begin, we're going to look at estimating sums by rounding to the nearest whole number. So for our first example, we're going to be estimating 6 and 75 hundredths plus 15 and 45 hundredths. So if we take a look at 6 and 75 hundredths, it's in between 6 and 7, but it's closer to 7. So 6 and 75 hundredths would round to 7. And then if we take a look at 15 and 45 hundredths, it's between 15 and 16. And because it's less than 15 and a half, we're going to round down to 15. So now we have our two rounded numbers, and we can go ahead and find the estimated sum by adding up 15 and 7. So when we add 15 and 7, we get an answer of 22. So that would be our answer for estimating that sum. For the next example, we're going to be estimating differences by rounding to the nearest whole number. So for this example, we have 7 and 13 hundredths minus 5 and 7 tenths. So let's take a look at 7 and 13 hundredths. So we know that it's in between 7 and 8, and it's a lot closer to 7, so we're going to round 7 and 13 hundredths to 7. And if we take a look at 5 and 7 tenths, 5 and 7 tenths is in between 5 and 6, and it's greater than 5 and a half, so we're going to round that up to 6. So then when we go and subtract now, we're going to be taking 7 minus 6, and we get an estimated difference of 1. For the next example, we're going to look at estimating the product, which means multiplication, of a decimal and a whole number by rounding the decimal. So for this particular example, we're going to be estimating the value of 11 and 97 hundredths times 2. So we don't have to do anything to the 2 because it's already a whole number, so we're just going to start by rounding 11 and 97 hundredths first. So if we take a look at 11 and 97 hundredths, the closest whole number to that would be 12. So we're going to round it to 12, and then now we can just go ahead and multiply. So we would have 12 times 2, which would give us an estimated product of 24. Next, we're going to be looking at estimating quotients of a decimal and a whole number. And this is where it can get a bit trickier because it doesn't follow the same rounding rules as when we use the other three operations. So if you can think back to when we were estimating quotients with whole numbers, remember we were looking to use compatible numbers. Those were those numbers that were easy to work with. So in our example of estimating the quotient of 23 and 64 hundredths and 3, we're going to be taking a look at 23 and 64 hundredths and figuring out what would be a good compatible number to use that would divide easily and evenly by 3. And that is also a whole number. So if we take a look at 23 and 64 hundredths, if we think about what we know about numbers close to that that are whole numbers that we can divide by 3. The two closest whole numbers would be 21 and 24. But we want to choose the closest number to 23 and 64 hundredths that can divide by 3. And so if we take a look at our options, 24 would be closer to 23 and 64 hundredths than 21 would be. So we're going to choose to round to 24. So now this becomes 24 divided by 3, which gives us an estimated quotient of 8. For the rest of the examples, we're going to look at estimating by rounding to the nearest tenth. So we're going to start by estimating sums by rounding to the nearest tenth. So we're going to start by estimating the value of 2 and 49 hundredths and 6 and 54 hundredths. So 
we need to start by rounding each of our numbers to the nearest tenth. So remember our rounding rules. We're going to circle our rounding digit, which is our tenths place. We're going to look next door and see if it's five or higher or four or lower. So when we look at our first number, we have a nine, which means that we need to round up, which means we're going to add one more to our tenths place, so the four is going to become a five. So it rounds to two and five tenths. Now let's take a look at six and fifty-four hundredths and do the same thing. So we're going to circle our rounding digit, which is the five in the tenths place. We're going to look next door. The four is four or lower, so that means we're going to just ignore. So we're going to keep the five in the tenths place. So now it rounds to six and five tenths. And remember when you round, you don't have to put anything else after the rounding digit. So now let's go and add and find our final number. So we have five plus five is 10, regroup. One plus two plus six is equal to nine. And we're gonna bring our decimal point straight down. So our answer would be equal to nine. And when you're writing your answer, you can just write it as a whole number. Next, we'll look at estimating differences by rounding to the nearest tenth. So we're gonna follow our same rules. So if we take a look at our example, we have 10 and 46 hundredths. Circle the rounding digit, look next door. It's a six, which means that we're gonna add one more to the tenths place. So 10, 46 hundredths would round to 10 and 5 tenths. And if we take a look at three and 52 hundredths, we circle the rounding digit, look next door, two or lower, which means we just ignore, which means that we're gonna keep a five in the tenths place. So it would round to three and five tenths. And then we can go ahead and subtract. Make sure when you are adding or subtracting, you are lining up the place value so that you don't get an incorrect answer. So we want to make sure our tenths place and our ones place lines up. We go ahead and subtract. 5 minus 5 is 0. We need to regroup. 10 minus 3 is 7. And we're going to bring our decimal point straight down so our answer is equal to 7. And when you're writing your answer, you can just write it as a whole number. Next, we'll estimate products by rounding to the nearest tenth. So we have 47 hundredths times 4. So we're going to go ahead and circle the rounding digit in the tenths place. Look next door. 7 or higher tells us that we're going to add one more to the tenths place, which means that 47 hundredths is going to round to 5 tenths. And now we're ready to go ahead and multiply. So we're going to take 5 tenths and we're going to multiply that by 4. So we're going to do 4 times 5, which is equal to 20. Regroup the 2. 4 times 0 is 0, plus 2 is 2. And then remember our trick for where we put the decimal point. We look at how many places we have to the right of the decimal point, and we have 1, which means we're going to move in one place from the far right and put our decimal points there. So our final answer would be 2.0, which we can just write as 2. For our final example in this video, we're going to estimate quotients by rounding to the nearest tenth. So for this example, we have 3 and 46 hundredths divided by 4. And so just like when we looked at the example when we rounded to the nearest whole number, we're going to be looking for a compatible number that goes to the tenths place that we can divide easily and evenly by 4. So we're going to look at our ones place and our tenths place, since we're going to our tenths place, and we're going to use our math facts to help us figure out what's a number close to 3.4, really in our heads we can be thinking 34, that we can divide by 4. So if we think of what we know, the numbers close to 34 that we can divide by 4 are 32 and 36. And if we think which one is closer, we would say that the closer number is 36. 
So when we're rounding to the nearest tenth, we would say that 3 and 46 hundredths would round to 3 and 6 tenths. So we can go ahead and divide 3 and 6 tenths by 4 now. So we know that 36 divided by 4 is equal to 9. 9 times 4 is 36. And then we're just going to bring our decimal point straight up at a placeholder 0. And our quotient is equal to 9 tenths.